back. Four o'clock rock. Okay, this is Hawaii the State of Clean Energy, the flagship show for the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum with my co-host Sharon Moriwaki. Hi, Sharon. Aloha. Yeah, nice to see your smiling face. Okay, we have we have other smiling faces here. We have Lauren Tanakawa, Tonokawa, yeah. And she is a very important person at what we used to refer to as the Hawaii Energy Accelerator. But now we're going to refer to it as the Ele Elemental Energy yeah. Accelerator. Or Elemental Accelerator. Elemental right Accelerator. Yeah. 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 Welcome to the show. We're going to find out all about that. Okay, Vincent Kimura. Uh, and he runs a thing called Smart Yields. We're going to find out exactly how smart the yields are <laughs> and how we can you know, get in on the yields somehow. <laughs> where he's going, which is global. We're going to find global. out. He's sitting right here at the table talking to us. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's begin with you, Lauren. Okay. What's happening? Well, in April, um, we formed a new partnership um, with a philanthropic and investment platform called Emerson Collective. Um, and along with that partnership came a name change. Um, we were formerly known as Energy Accelerator, and we've aligned our new name, Elemental Accelerator, with Emerson Collective's initiative for the environment, which is aligning the relationship with, between humanity and nature, and that's called Emerson Elemental. Mm -hmm. um, so to align ourselves not only within our mission, but also external facing as well, um, we changed our name to Elemental Accelerator. And that's why we're calling the show, It's Elemental, My Dear Watson. <laughs> Love it. You say Elemental, My Dear Vincent. <laughs> So how is this going to change things for you? Um, well, the name also better communicates um, the work we do beyond energy. Um, we fund companies in water, in agriculture, um, as well as transportation and cybersecurity. Um, so we've expanded our scope, and we've been expanding our scope for the past couple of years. So, so tell us how you have evolved, your cohorts have evolved, you know? Who's been in your cohorts? How many have you had? And where is it going to go now, you think? Sure. Um, we're, we've closed applications uh, at the end of May, and so we are currently in due diligence for our sixth cohort. Vincent's a part of our fifth. Um, and each cohort, cohort has how many? Uh, 12 to 15 companies. Um, so this year, about 400 companies took the first step to apply, and we're, we'll, at the end of um, our due diligence process, we'll have a cohort of about a dozen or so. Did you bring any application forms with you? I did it. It's all online, elementalaccelerator.com. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. What, what, do you, what do you do for your cohorts? I mean, what, what do you provide for them? What do they provide for you? Yeah. Um, so we provide two primary things for our cohorts, one of which is funding, and the other one is relationships and strategic relationships, to be more specific. Um, and that's the piece of our program that's highly customized towards each company because um, each of them needs something different mm -hmm. um, so smart yields won't need the same thing as ibis networks which is another one of our local cohort companies um, and so we introduce them to people customers investors um, and strategic partners that can help them scale mm, that can be really critical mm -hmm. how long is your program or i mean is it like a year or is it you know six weeks or is it Forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, companies are our portfolio companies forever. We form very long term relationships with them. Um, on the go to market track, the program lasts about eight months or so. Um, That's and when you're intensive. Yeah, yeah, and we're working with them pretty intensely on their customer strategies and entering new markets. Um, and on the demonstration side, where we're helping companies deploy projects here, um, those last somewhere between 12 to 18 months. Mm. Mm -hmm. What happens with, at the end? Do you get a, a little certificate with a, a little frame? Or, <laughs> and, you, you know, is that the end? I mean, they have to go and never darken your doorstep again? Never knock on our door again. <laughs> do, do they come back? Do you have reunions, for example? Yeah, well, we do about a biannual, what we call a CEO summit or family reunion, um, where all of our companies are invited to get together um, and form relationships cross cohort because um, they know each other pretty well within their their cohort. They talk yeah. to each other during the program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they come together about three or four times um, for three or four weeks in Hawaii and Silicon Valley. Um, 
And then we also like to connect them cross cohort as well, and that's what the CEO summits and family reunions are for. Mm. Mm -hmm. What do they do for you? Yeah. Ask not what you can do for them. <laughs> Ask what they can do for you. Yeah. Well, each company donates uh, one to six percent equity back into our nonprofit, mm -hmm. and that goes to help fund future cohorts. So if they're successful, you're happy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's how we align ourselves with their success. We're bought in. Um, that's why you want to have reunions too. <laughs> yeah, just to check out. Um, but they also um, are a big part, like the portfolio and the cohort is a big part of our program. Um, and we love to see companies collaborate, and um, the best CEOs are those that form two way relationships with each other. Great. Mm -hmm. Successful organization. You guys have grown like Topsy. Yeah. And you had great effect. Good. Have you got any national, uh, you know, what do you call it, um, um, where they come out, what do you call it, first, uh, first offering, what do you call it? Uh, oh, an IPO. IPO. Have you had any IPOs? Have your have, cohorts? Tell me now. We haven't yeah? had any IPOs, but we did have our first cash exit, which was an acquisition. Uh, last year, it was a company called Brightbox. Technologies. Heard that. And they, yeah, and they were acquired by Next Tracker, which does solar tracking. So that's a success. Yeah. Yeah. That was that's very great. exciting for that's us. That's great. Mm -hmm. And you can say, well, I made, I made that happen. I helped them out. Mm -hmm. I knew them when they were <laughs> young children, like young pups. They came to me, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I gave them nourishment and <laughs> ideas and a little money. I know. Contact. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, is that happening for you? Yeah, yeah, we're really excited. So as, as Lauren said, we are in the current go-to-market track for the Elemental Accelerator. So we had our big demo day in April. And uh, I can't tell you how, um, it, you know, they've been really helping us as a part of a growth accelerator model, which is different from some of the other programs that we've been through as well. So it's, it's all about proving your strategy and kind of scaling it uh, beyond just Hawaii. Obviously, the Asia Pacific region is the core for Elemental. So, is that appeal to you, actually, Lauren? I mean, to, to have a global company on your hands, you want them to be global. Yeah. The yeah. bigger, the better. The mm -hmm. more global, the better. Mm -hmm. So, when he tells you he wants to go global, you think, <laughs> go yeah. yeah, we want to help companies scale. Um, right Hawaii here in Hawaii, is sort of fabulous. Yeah. Tested. Well, Put us on the map. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, what kind of company is it exactly? When I say smart yields, I. I I actually think of, I think of stock market. <laughs> <laughs> You're not the first one, Jay. So you know, we, we fondly call ourselves a Fitbit for Farms, or an extension agent in an app. And and you know what really we've learned over the last 18 months that we've been you know hacking away at this in the startup culture, is that it's a really big problem, and it requires a really big solution. And I think. You know, where we started even before we entered in um, our first accelerator program, Blue Startups, to where we are now, we're in a completely different space. Mm -hmm. You know, it's... it's That happens. Yeah, that? it does. That happens. <laughs> mm -hmm. When you get into the creative process, you have to be flexible. And instead of going this way, you decide, well, I think I'll go that way. <laughs> you know, we didn't know what we didn't know. Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, thankfully we have programs like the Elemental Program, who have been, um, uh, you know, a really blessing, breath of fresh air for us too, because it's it's all like we trust you, but uh, what are your problems and how can we help you resolve it? You know, it's a very, as she said, it's very customized. So I, I, I have so many questions. Forgive me if I dodge yeah. around here, but mm -hmm. so you wake up in the morning and say, hmm, you know, I, I have, I'm, I'm troubled. At three <laughs> o'clock at night, I, I was troubled about something bothering me, some kind of thing that's you know, creating an obstacle for my development of my company. So you call up in the morning, you say, Lauren, <laughs> I want to tell you how troubled I am. And she answers you. She tells you, is that how it works? Yeah, yeah, kind of like, a, you know, you have a little button, you push it, and all this on the back of <laughs> the back yeah, door. Yeah. nice of you, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we, we so um, obviously Lauren handles communications, so we have Warren, who's our, our coach, and he handles the go-to-market track. So we're in constant communications with him. Uh, and he does that mean every day? Uh, I would say at least once a week. Okay. Yeah, in the beginning, leading up to the uh, kind of the interactive week, we were chatting multiple times a week. Example of conversation. Uh, you know, what's going on? How can they help us? You know, um, they're affirmative. I mean, they're proactive. Very proactive. They say to you, "What's going on?" They call yeah. you up and say, "Vincent, we need to know yeah. what's going we on." We have we had weekly kind of uh, little scrum meetings, uh, video calls. You know, and uh, it was very you know whatever is going on, whatever you're thinking about, let's kind of talk about it, and you know, it could be anything. 
Are they going to put you in touch with experts or just business partners? You know, you know Lauren mentioned, you know, you're going to give them sort of Rolodex kind of information and get contacts. But are the contacts experts that you could bring in in-house as contractors? Or are they business partners you might do business with in Bolivia? It was actually all of the above. Ah, so, okay. you know, be it a pitch coach or a story coach, which you know, they were they're kind enough to really kind of help us craft messages. To the, the real aspect that I really enjoyed was the peer to peer. So a lot of the oh, you know, other company other doing companies, similar things, mm. and and a lot of that, <clears throat> you know, from a mentor perspective, you know, you, you can have a lot of great folks who've had a, a lot of good experience, but when you look at you know where we are in this day and age and the the challenges we're having, as for example, my role as a CEO, business side, it, it it's never better to actually talk to another CEO. And just kind of, you know, over a drink or whatnot, say, hey, I got this problem. You know, what do you think? Or how have you yeah. resolved it? Yeah, I know what happens next. Because I know, I know Sharon well enough to know the question she's going to ask you. Okay, <laughs> Sharon is going to ask you. I'll leave it to her to ask you. But she is going to ask you. So, Vincent, what are your challenges? So, you know, the biggest challenge that we see today is how can we really support small farmers? And you know, to, to kind of not to go too much into the market concept, but essentially 570 million farmers in the world, and 99% of them are small farmers. Mm -hmm. So how can you create a technology to appeal to them? And then that obviously is it's very different. Yeah, yeah, it's very different. It's not the typical corn, wheat, soy. You know, you don't have huge mechanized tractors that kind of drive by themselves. You have a very, uh, <clears throat> obviously you're very, uh, income constringent, right? You have a lot of challenges with a very diversified crop, and then there's it's beyond that. It's it's how you get the harvest to market. It's how you get the commodities in terms of the right price point. It's how you pay those farmers. I mean, it's it's a it's a huge challenge. You're talking about every aspect of agriculture. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a farmer in Bolivia. I always pick that country. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I'm having a little trouble. I mean, I need, I need help. Uh, and I'd like to take advantage of your technology. And I call you up. I say, Vincent, and I say this in Spanish, by the way. See? <laughs> <See? laughs> Vincent, I need help with my farm. It's not going that well. I need to use technology. I need to improve my yields. <laughs> How can you help me? What can you do? What happens then? Yeah. So first and foremost, you know, depending on the crop that you're working with, and obviously we have to pick and choose crops that we can, can actually, you know, have experience with. Uh, but first and foremost, you know, we don't prescribe that we know how to grow your crops better than you do. But when you talk about pests, when you talk about other factors related to that, that's an area where, you know, every farmer will obviously want support on. And it's the data that is really key. And what we've learned is it's not just about showing data on a platform or numbers, it's what you do with that data. Sure. It's the insights from that data. Sure. Yeah, and that's the piece where, you know, I would say, that, you know, the last 18 months, the ahas have been, okay, you know, we have this platform, okay, here we go, we'll, we'll show the, the, the graphs and the numbers, and they're like, well, what do I do? How do I change it? Or what do I, what do I infer? You know, so if you have a, a pest problem, a bug problem, which everyone does, you know, it's figuring out when those pests migrate. You know, ah. environmental factors. And, and as a farmer, I wouldn't necessarily know that. I need, I need to have a larger expertise on that. Yeah, yeah. And, and to, to, let's pull it back home a little bit as an example. You have the coffee berry border beetle, right, CBB, which obviously also affects you know, a lot of the other, uh, you know, countries that, for example, that border you, you know, where you are. And the theory is that CBB migrates based on humidity. But what is that humidity number? So the awareness factor is really key. And then it's about what is the right time to apply your chemicals or pesticides or things like that. So one, you can reduce the risk. You can slow the movement. You're going to stop it. You can slow it. And then you can uh, save in a lot of the costs. Okay. But so I how can... do you create that data set? I mean, I'm just kind of Exactly. That's because... my question. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, how, and where, you know, how big do you go? How small do you go? Is it pests, or is it you know the soil, and what kinds of crops? I mean, and and how do you connect that to your actual constituents, you know, the actual farmer? You can go on on the iPad or iPhone. Like how how do you make that connection or get your base together? Yeah, it, it's a really challenging subject because there is a lot of data out there. There is between you know general weather data, or you have some really amazing nonprofit NGO groups like Conservation International. Mm -hmm. That's deployed, you know, 
thousands of weather stations throughout Africa. Uh, the biggest challenge is aggregating that data into one platform. So you can see that resolution, lots which is, data. yeah, lots of data. And then the, the question of the accuracy of the data is the other big thing. How accurate mm. is this? So redundancy and, and looking at, you know, different factors, because if you make a decision based on that data point, you better be darn sure that that data point's yeah, accurate. That whole crop could die. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so you program a uh, lot of yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, luckily we have a, we have a Justin. So yeah. our Justin is our CTO, so he's the programmer. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's, it's something that we have to piecemeal and, and, and look at all the features, a lot of things we want to do and say, okay, what do we start with? Mm -hmm. What can we deploy within two, three, four, five months? And what, 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 do, what do our customers want? Mm. You know? So you can adapt the program or the modules of the program to the, the company and to the company's needs. Does, it, does the program live on the web or does it live on this fellow's computer? And what's the oh, capital of Bolivia? <laughs> <laughs> Hold it far. It's in the cloud. Yeah. It's in the cloud. It's in the cloud. It's all in yeah. the cloud. So you can see it while it's happening. Yeah. Are you going to, you fun. know, enter data in the other end, or is this person going to, you know, have a sort of fixed system where he accesses it and you just watch without, you know, active participation? That's actually a, a really big key of, of what differentiates smart yields from other competitors is the metadata. Mm -hmm. So you know, anyone can watch a data point go up and down or stay the same, but why is it, why did it do that? And that's the piece on recipes that we're really trying to answer. Because, yeah. for example, you as a farmer in Bolivia, you know, the first and foremost question everyone asks is, you know, what should I grow? You know, are the crops that I'm currently growing in the microclimates on my field, are they the optimal crops to grow? You know, and really it's, it's how can I change my recipes to fit every single microclimate? Yeah. So, so you got to keep on putting more data in there. Yeah. It's just like every Friday you update <laughs> all this data. We're going to take a short break, okay? And when we come back, we're going to find out what Lauren thinks of Vincent. <laughs> oh, ready? Okay, we'll be right back after this break. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to YouTube, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Olelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Freedom. Is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others. And in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities. Well. We're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech here in Hawaii, the state of clean energy with the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum and Sharon Moriwaki, co-chair of that forum and co-host of this show. Hi again, Sharon. Hello. <laughs> so we have a movie, you know. I mean, we, we, we need to sort of refresh. We have this movie. Can we play the movie now and learn more? Of all of the places and all the wonders that she'd seen, Hawaii was the most resilient, the most accepting to change. This movement is real. That our convictions lead to innovation, lead to conservation, that technology must serve ecology. And you can hear the world breathing. We've now deployed over $20 million to companies, and they've gone on to take that funding and raise over $350 million of follow-on funding. We also have implemented over 28 demonstration projects in Hawaii and the Asia Pacific. Nicholas Flanders, co-founder and CEO of Opus 12. Virtually anything that you can make from oil, we can make from CO2. We're recreating photosynthesis, but at warp speed. A single unit will have the power of 37,000 trees in the volume of a suitcase. There is going to be a multi-trillion dollar market globally for, for these energy technologies. 
Swiftly is a big data platform that analyzes billions of data points to help transit agencies become more efficient. In total, we've now launched this platform in 29 cities and we impact 2 million transit riders every single day. Lisa Liam, the VP of Marketing at Bitchley. Our system allows their utility to provide insights on their energy usage by appliance to reduce their energy bill by a couple hundred dollars each year. We are on our 25th utility in about 12 countries around the world. Terviva is commercializing an oilseed tree crop called Pangamia. Very proud to announce here today, we are gonna be planting 2,000 acres of Pangamia, and we're gonna bring 20 jobs back to that particular part of the state. My name is Arkady, and I'm here to introduce FreeWire Technologies. We've gone global already with customers such as Vector, who's in the crowd. And as of this morning, we've signed a deal with Dubai Electricity and Water Authority to scale the product up in the Middle East as well. So at WaterSmart, we work with water utilities and help them to better understand and effectively communicate with their customers. WaterSmart now works with 60 water utilities in 12 different states. We could be a part of a paradigm shift from an economy that is fundamentally extractive to one that is circular. Nature figured this out millions of years ago because for our mission of healing and strengthening the symbiosis between humanity and nature, there is not a place on this planet that plays greater host and offers greater evidence that we can succeed than Hawaii. So we're so proud to have the accelerator be at home and then grow that journey, find its way across the Pacific and ultimately beyond. Two. One. Okay, we're back, we're live, now we're going to have a retrospective on the movie. <laughs> Lauren, what was that movie all about? Why and what did it include and you know, what was the general purpose of it? Yeah, that recapped a week um, with us and our companies in Silicon Valley. Um, we do this yearly and the week culminates in an event called EEX Interactive where this year over 20 of our companies presented to more than 200 mm -hmm. investors. Um, and strategic partners and corporates. Um, and so each of them got up and do, did a two-minute pitch, and that was followed by um, a really nice soiree. Yeah, very nice movie. Well done. High values. And Vincent was in the movie. Yeah. I was. <laughs> I was pitching. How did you like, did yeah. you like the experience? What did you oh, do? That was amazing. What, what happened? It was probably was. one of the hardest pitches I've done, especially oh, yeah. for a, a, mm -hmm. an A-list audience. Oh, well, there's 200 people out there. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the, the, the shorter ones are always, in some respects, harder, especially with, since there's no slides. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And really? you're just standing Two minutes, there. you got to really put yeah. it together. Yeah. yeah. Can't, can't just blab on. <laughs> <laughs> so do they ask you questions, or is it just a presentation? Boom, boom, boom. There's oh. Q&A at the end yeah. Yeah, of, every, mm -hmm. of a group. So what was the most challenging part of that? I knew you'd ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> I like challenges. I like uh, yeah, I like coming out of here. You know, it was, it, was, um, it was really good. It was very well done. And I had fortunately done a lot of pitching in the last 18 months. So I both uh, found it very challenging but also very gratifying. It was a lot of fun. You get all the right answers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, the, the question that was asked, I, I knew. It's <laughs> great. So you like Vincent then? Yeah, Vincent's amazing. Okay. So, um, uh, so therefore you included him. You don't include everybody who applies, for example, to be in a cohort. Mm -hmm. Why did you include Vincent and Smart Yields? Yeah, we look at a few things when um, selecting companies, a mix of the technology, the team and the people involved, um, as well as their fit for this market here. Um, because what we do with companies, we work, we introduce them to our network here and introduce them to partners. Um, and we've found that we provide the most value when they're interested in this market or markets in the Asia Pacific. Mm. Um, so you want to encourage companies that are in this market, yeah? Yeah, we want to help them start here and scale. Yeah. Now, you know, earlier on, you were the energy accelerator. Mm -hmm. So now you're beyond that. So what, what kind of things, and you still cover energy, of course. Yes. Mm -hmm. But what kind of other things uh, suit your fancy? Yeah, we're interested in agriculture, as well as mobility, so transportation solutions, um, as well as cybersecurity and resilience. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Across the, as it relates to energy. And, we at ThinkTech are interested in all of those things. <laughs> Send us your tired, huggled masses yeah. yearning, yearning to be rich. 
<laughs> yeah, we align in interest <laughs> categories. <laughs> and then water, of course. Water, of course. Oh, this is, what a great array of things to do. Mm -hmm. You know, ultimately, that'll have a huge effect on the world, actually, mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. world, I say. Yeah, we like to think in systems and not just impact, like, one channel of that system. Good. We want to so you take the lessons that. that you've learned in dealing with and helping, you know, cohorts in one area, mm -hmm. and you put them in another area, now you can, you can be more general in, in how yeah. you help people. Yeah, and that works for places as well. So we take lessons learned of the work we do here in Hawaii, yeah. um, and we're hoping to replicate that in other geographies. Yeah. How do you sleep at night? Yeah. Well. <laughs> you don't sleep at yeah. night. <laughs> so what do you think of Vince? I mean, how's he doing? I mean, uh, you know, you took him in the program. How long ago was it? April. April. Well, oh, so that's only, that's only 90 April. days. Yeah. Yeah. And then February was the, the start of the program. Mm -hmm. okay, how's he been doing? Just yeah, between they've been, us. They've been gaining a <laughs> bunch of traction. They've raised some money, and they've gotten accepted into a new program. Yeah. Yeah, we're How really about excited. that? What yeah, program, program is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, yet to know more. Yeah. Vatican <laughs> Blessed Program. Vatican so, Blessed Program. Yeah. How much detail can you provide? <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. So we were very, very fortunate. So they made a call out to the world. And... Um, his Holiness created what's called Laudato Si. Talking about the Pope? The Pope. His Holiness the Pope. Totally talking about the Pope. Yeah, Pope. Okay. And, the Pope. <laughs> and it's focused on climate change and what we need to do to take care of uh, Mother Earth. Of course. He'd be all in favor of that. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah. he's um, it, it pretty amazing. Um, amazing to see, especially from the different Catholics I've talked to. They're like, yes, we're very familiar with that. And that's something that I hadn't really known much of. So it's a challenge to the entrepreneurial community to take really tough, challenges like food and uh, solve that through technology. Wow. You must be so proud. Yeah. The prospects are enormous, really enormous. I mean, every country, every place, uh, agriculture is, uh, is always going to be relevant and necessary. How do you cope with the other elements of technology? In For example, how do you deal with GMOs and things like that? You know, we have to stay neutral in all aspects. And, and really, it comes down to how can we feed the populations, cause, because in, in our lifetime, in the next 30 years, we'll have another 3 billion mouths. So if you think about the 1 billion that are already starving, that's a lot of food we need to produce. And the only way we can do that is if we switch from, you know, international or regional to local growing. We all yeah. have to grow. I can just see the pitch now. They say, Vincent, uh, tell us what kind of market you want to serve. Well, let's see. <laughs> It's, it's uh, what, 11 billion, 12 billion, <laughs> hungry mouths. <laughs> and then Lawrence says, we like that. <laughs> How about the technology? You've got to follow the technology, too. You can't be static about it, yeah? You know, I'm a big fan of not reinventing the wheel. And if it's already out there and it's successful, let's integrate that and let's move on. So, you know, our platform is hardware agnostic. We integrate third-party hardware. You know, and really, it's about data aggregation. And then what we've learned even more, like I mentioned earlier, it's about what you do with that data and how you can put it back and give recommendations to that small farmer so they can collectively in a community work together. Wow. So a huge aspect that we talk about is workforce development, you know, mm -hmm. especially for non-traditional mm -hmm. farmers. Workforce development on the yeah. farm. Yeah, yeah. So you give them advice. They're losing farmers until yeah. you can make it yeah. you know, much more lucrative, much more exciting for like the students coming out of school. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, so aside from Bolivia and, uh, <laughs> and uh, the Vatican, um, what about local here in Hawaii, Nei? What's happening? Yeah, so we're excited. We're actually going to be at the, the Urban Garden Center workshop on Friday and Saturday this week, mm -hmm. talking to small growers and home growers and small mm -hmm. farmers. And we, uh, our app is, is just going to be released at the App Store, so they'll be able to buy a package and uh, help irrigate some of their, their plants. What's the name of the app? Don't say Smart Yields. It is Smart Yields. <laughs> <laughs> so what's in Smart Yields? If I bought it, what, what, what do I get? So you essentially get, you know, it depends on your, your conditions and what you want to accomplish and what your crops. You know, we don't prescribe a, a one-size-fits-all, but it's really, you know, what do you, you know, what kind of farmer are you? What kind of home grower are you? You know, how many plants are you growing? What, what diversity of crops are you growing? So all those factors kind of, you know, um, and really what's, what kind of pain points you have. You know, so irrigation or automating irrigation is a big issue because if you can keep your plants, your soil, you know, moist and alive, mm -hmm. then that's, that's a lot of the hurdle. Mm. But the other thing, too, is, you know, picking what plants grow well in the environments that you have. 
Uh, so the awareness factor, so maybe you're getting too much sun or too little sun, and that's automatically a you know, failure in terms of the success of the growth of this plant. Well, Lauren, we're almost out of time. Sorry. But I, I would like to uh, offer you the opportunity to kind of make a closing statement on behalf of the um, elemental. elemental, you know, it's, uh, it's elemental, my dear Watson, um, <laughs> kind of elemental, about, you know, <clears throat> why of all the cohorts that you have, uh, a cohort members that you have, did you select, I guess you made the selection, uh, Vincent to come down. And what, what do you want people to take away from this discussion about the accelerator and about Vincent? Sure. Um, so Vincent and Smart Yields is a very interesting technology and team, which is why they're a part of our program. Um, and even more interesting than that, they not only do work in agriculture, um, but thinking play space here, they also do work in education as well. And those two aspects are very important to us. Um, being able to innovate for the here and now, but also looking into the future as well and, and growing the next generation of innovators. Yeah, I only want to say, Vincent, that after you've done these, these big projects ahead of you and you've had an effect, a profound effect on agriculture and therefore humanity in the world, I hope you'll come back and talk to us some more. You know, don't be mm -hmm. a stranger. Yes, and tell us about the Vatican Bless project. <laughs> Sharon, you want to close? This is your big opportunity. Okay. I really appreciate Lauren coming down. Finally, mm -hmm. we get to hear about yeah. Elemental Accelerator <laughs> and also bring Vincent. Thank you, Vincent. And we look forward to um, a number of these projects. They're cohort six now. So we're propagating quite a lot of entrepreneurs for the world, not only in energy, but beyond. So we appreciate that. So thank you very much. And keep the work going forward. We look forward to hearing more about it. All right. Mm -hmm. It's elemental, my dear Watson. Thank you so much, you guys. It's been a great discussion. Aloha. Thanks for having me. <laughs>